Hello guys, I hope you have learned timer instruction in the previous video. Now, we're going to learn counter instructions. Counters are similar to timers, except that a counter accumulates the changes in state of an external trigger signal, whereas timers increment using an internal clock. In this video, first, we'll explain counter instructions which are count up, count down, and reset. Finally, we'll use the count up instruction, to count all boxes which are moved by a belt conveyor. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, I have used Arslogix Emulate 5000 to create this virtual PLC station, and define it here, under IO configuration. Counters are generally triggered by a change in an input field device, that cause a false to true transition of the counter ladder rung. It does not matter how long the rung stays true or false, it's only the transition that counts. Here are two basic counter types, count up and count down. Like timers, this instruction can be used to reset the accumulated value of counters to zero. Let me insert a count down instruction. First, I must create a tag of type counter, and enter the preset and the accumulated value. When entering the instruction, this tag must be defined, before the preset and accumulated values can be entered. Well, the type of this tag, by default is counter. Let me create it under the main program. Well, Let's see the created tag in the program tags table. As you see, the created tag has several parameters. The preset value specifies the value, that the counter must reach, before the done bit turns on. The accumulated value is the number of false to true transitions of the counter run. This value can be reset to zero by using the reset instruction. The count up enable bit, CU, indicates the count up counter is enabled. Similarly, this bit, CD, indicates the count down counter is enabled. The done bit, DN, will be 1 if the accumulated value is equal to, or greater than the preset value. Note that the accumulated value keeps incrementing, even after its value reaches the preset value. The overflow bit, OV, indicates the counter exceeded the upper limit is set when the accumulated value is greater than plus 21 47 48 36 47. Similarly, the underflow bit, UN, indicates that the counter exceeded the lower limit value. This diagram shows how an up counter works. When I activate this contact, the enable bit of the counter will be activated too, and also the accumulated value will be increased one unit. This process will continue, until the accumulated value reaches the preset value. When the accumulated value is equal to or greater than the preset value, the done bit will be on. Note that, after this value, the counter can be used to increase the accumulated value. But every time we use the reset instruction, the accumulated value will be changed to zero. Similarly, this diagram shows how a down counter works. Like the up counter, when the accumulated value is equal to or greater than the preset value, the done bit will be 1. But this counter works inversely. By each counter activating, the accumulated value will be decreased. When its value reduced less than the preset value, the done bit changes to 0. Alright, let me complete a simple program, to test the inserted down counter.
For this contact, I use a digital input of the virtual PLC station. In the next rung, I want to use the done bit of the inserted counter, to turn on an output. Finally, let me use another digital input, to reset my counter. Now, let me verify the controller and the program. And then, download the program to the virtual controller. Let me change the controller mode to run mode. As you can see, by each counter activation, the accumulated value will decrease one unit. By the next activation, the accumulated value will reduce less than the preset value, so the done bit will be changed from 1 to 0. Also, based on the last rung, I can use the second digital input to reset the accumulated value to 0. All right. We have done the sorting box project, and then extend it in the previous video, using timers. An example application of a count up counter program used to count boxes on a belt conveyor. So, in this video, I'm going to extend the sorting box program, to count and display the number of all boxes, which are placed on the belt conveyor. So, I insert another sensor to detect boxes. Note that, the previous sensor detects only large boxes, based on their height. But the new sensor detects all boxes. Let me modify its name, to sensor 2. Now. I want to find and insert a digital display from the right list, to display the number of all entered boxes. As you see, this the name of the inserted digital display. Now, I right click on the inserted digital display, then under configuration, I select integer. As you can see, I can change the state of each inserted equipment manually. Pay attention, if you want to control equipment using PLC, I must click here, to release them. Now. Let's modify the factory I.O. connection settings. I have inserted a sensor as a digital input, and also a digital display as an output which receive integer numbers. I don't change my controller IP address and its slot number, but I need one more digital input. So I change this number from 4 to 5. Also, I have an output which uses integer data type.
Now, I connect the inserted equipment to my PLC. Let's extend the PLC program using these addresses, to count and display the number of boxes. Well, this the PLC program which has been extended in the previous video, using timer instructions. I can extend this program after the last rung, but like Arslogix 500 software, let me write the counting program part, in another routine. So, I right click here, and create another routine, under the main program. First, I select a name for the new routine. Here, I can select its language. We're using ladder language. And finally, I determine where the new routine should be created. Let me open the new routine. I want to write my counting program here. In the first rung, I use the second sensor to activate an up counter. Remember in factory I.O. software, the second sensor is connected to this address. In the second rung, I want to use a move instruction, to copy the counter accumulated value to the in underscore out zero address, which has been connected to the inserted digital display, in factory I.O. software. In the third rung, I want to use start push buttons to reset the accumulated value. Well, to run this program in my controller, I must call that from the main routine. So, in the last rung of the main routine, I use a jump to subroutine instruction, to call the counting box program. Now, let me compile the project, and then, download it to my controller. Let's back to factory I.O. software. I click here to connect the software to my controller. As you see, the connection has been established, but this tag has not detected. Why? Note that, I have defined this tag, under the main program, not under my controller. Factory I.O. software can detect and connect to tags, which are defined on the controller tags table, like digital input output addresses of real modules. So, 
I must delete this tag, and defined again on the controller tags table. Now, let me download the program to my controller. Well, I must change my CPU mode to program mode. Now let's back to run mode. Let's connect factory I.O. software to my controller again. As you can see, at this time, all tags or addresses have been detected. Now let's test the project. As you can see, my program works correctly. Here I can see the number of boxes, which have been passed in front of the sensor. I hope you enjoyed this video, in the next video, we'll continue learning Arslogix 5000 instructions with math and comparison instructions. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.